when you find the right swim bait, you not only catch big fish, but you can catch good numbers of fish. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the new Mega Bass Sioux Witch. And this is one of those baits. It is a versatile, mid-sized swim bait that flat out catches fish. We're going to get into the review right now. The Mega Bass Sioux Witch is five and a quarter inches long. It weighs approximately one and one eighth ounce. It comes in ten different colors. Now for those of you who may be watching the channel for the first time, I want to let you know that I am not sponsored by any bait manufacturers. I buy all of my own baits. When I buy baits, I don't buy them to review. I initially buy a bait because I think it's going to fit in my arsenal and it'll find a place on my deck. If you are looking for an unboxing, somebody that's going to pull a bait out of the box and show you how pretty it is, I'll save you some time. I don't do that. Before I do a review, I put time on the water. You'll see hook rash and bite marks on any bait that I review. So with that being said, we're going to get into exactly what this bait does, how it gets bit. I'll go over some of the problems that I had because right off the bat I started getting bit with this thing. I was hooking up with a lot of fish but I wasn't landing a lot of fish. I had to make some bait modifications and I had to adjust my rod selection. We're going to go over all of that. If you like to see a lot of action in these videos, uh, I'm going to wait till the end of the video and then I will uh, I'll put in some of the uh, some of the action that I've had in the last couple weeks and I, I will say I've, I've got about 30 hours on this bait and um, it has produced for me. All right, the reason that I bought the Sioux Witch is because I am a big fan of the Mikey, the Mikey, the Mikey Senior. This is the Jack All Mikey Sen Senior. It's no longer made. My favorite wake bait. I've caught more fish on this bait than any swim bait or wake bait in my box. I've got three left. I can't get any more. When I lose those three or fish taken from me, it's going to be a sad day. So I am continually looking for a bait that will do what the Mikey does. And when I saw this Sioux Witch, they look pretty close. I like the bill. I like the angle of the bill. The whole works. It's, uh, it, you know, I thought maybe this is the bait. Well, I found out that this will not replace the Mikey. It's it's just too small. The Mikey's six and a half inches, a couple ounces, and it's much bulkier. The Mikey has much better big fish open water drawing power than the Sioux Witch. The Sioux Witch just doesn't have the surface disturbance that is necessary when you get a little wind coming up, come up, you got a water chop and you're fishing in big open water. Where this bait excels is on a day like today. It's flat calm, there's no sur surface disturbance on the water. You're fishing for fish in shallow water, and you may be fishing for spooky fish. That's when this thing excels. Now, Sioux Witch, it comes from, they got its name from the bill. And the bill on this can be switched in four different positions. So this is in the wake bait position. You can switch it up four different notches all the way to a diving position. Uh, uh, a diving swim bait. So that's where the versatility of this bait comes in and I thought it was pretty gimmicky. That lasted about two days because when I started using the bill I started catching more fish and I'll tell you guys this adjustable bill is no joke. This is the real thing. Alright, let's get into uh, how I started fishing it, some of the modifications I had to make, how you fish the bait, how you don't want to fish it, and the rods that you want to use with this bait. Uh, number one, uh, let's talk about the finish on these. Mega Bass is famous for a couple of things. Beautiful finishes, beautiful paint, uh, you know, no different on this bait. I, I told you it came in 10 colors. The colors are beautiful and they will replicate any bait that happens to be in, in your particular body of water. I've had 30 hours on this bait and you can see I've got a lot of hook rash on it. I've got bite marks on this thing. I've got uh, uh, a lot of use pattern on this. I don't care about that. If my baits are clean and shiny, that means I'm not catching fish. If they look like this, that means I'm catching fish. So beautiful paint, like most beautiful paint jobs, they're not going to last once they get eaten up. Now the other thing that Mega Bass is famous for is putting, on, in my opinion, putting on too small of hooks 
and two light of wire hooks. No, uh, no difference with this. These are not standard hooks. I've been through about three sets of hooks, changing them out, getting the hooks that I need on there to actually catch fish and land fish. Okay, so let's talk about some of the adjustments I had to make with the bait. And the first thing I did was I had to change the hooks. The hooks that it came with were very small hooks. This is one of the hooks that uh, I started with. And you can see it's already, it took about two days for me to catch fish on this thing and start bending out the hooks. So I started upgrading the hooks. I thought it needed a bigger hook. The first hook I, I put on it was a Mustad Ultra Point uh, number four hook. Uh, that is the hook that is currently on the back. But when I replaced all three hooks, and you can see this, that back hook is smaller than the two front hooks, I still wasn't hooking up a whole lot. So I, what I did was I, I am running two larger hooks in the front and a number four Mustad in the back. And these are all, I think they're 2X heavy. I wish I could tell you what size these hooks are. What I had to do uh, I didn't have a hook that I thought was the right size, so I had a brand new River to Sea Biggie. And I looked at that Biggie and I said, those are the hooks. That's the exact hook that I need. These, are, these two hooks here are from a River to Sea Biggie. If you have any of those, replicate that hook, put it on here. Once I got this set up here, along with changing out several rods, it took that bait from just a bait that got bit a lot to a bait that just started killing fish out here. Now I started off with a seven foot two medium heavy fairly fast rod uh, and I started losing a lot of fish. That rod was too heavy it didn't have enough tip. The tip on it was pretty fast. Uh, so I started switching out rods. Now the rod I'm using to throw that bait is a Daiwa Tatula. It's a Tatula Elite seven foot cranking rod. Now this rod has a very limber tip and all of the power in this rod is in the midsection. And what I found on this bait, one of the ways I was losing a lot of fish, when I would hook a big fish, it would come up, shake its head, and you guys know the, the drill, this bait goes flying. It, you need a rod that, uh, that has a fairly soft tip that's going to take the play out of that hook set. With this rod, I can set hard, I can pin the fish into the midsection of the rod, get a good bend on that rod, keep my drag fairly tight, and then work that fish back to the boat. So if you, you're gonna wanna change out those hooks, the split rings, and make sure you're, you're fishing it with a fairly forgiving rod with a light tip. Most cranking rods will, will work. Um, like I said, once I did that, man, this thing became a killer. I am fishing it with 55 pound braid. <clears throat> if you are fishing, and I'm out here on the California Delta, and this is a big fish factory out here. Any cast, you can, you can hook up with a double digit fish. So I use heavy line. If I was fishing primarily uh, a clear water lake, I may go with 15 pound straight mono. I may go with 40, 45 pound braid. I may go with braid and a, a mono or fluoro tip. If you are using this, as a wake bait, I definitely stick with mono. If you are switching the bill to a diving bait, you might want to go with floral. It'll get you a little more depth. Uh, I have found using the braid when it's fished as a wake bait, I will get about maybe a foot of depth if I reel it in. I have found that with the bait in the diving position, I'm getting about five feet of depth with this bait. I mentioned that I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but when I bought the bait, I thought I would be using it as primarily a wake bait. When I got it, it was a little bit small, wasn't going to replace the Mikey. So after about two or three days, I had finally, I would caught plenty of fish, but I got in one of those situations where the topwater bite just wasn't happening. I switched the bill uh, to the diving uh, position. I hadn't gotten a bite in about 45 minutes. I think on my third cast, I picked up a fish. Uh, for the next half an hour, 45 minutes, I caught four or five more fish. I knew right away that this little adjustment was what did the trick. The fish stopped feeding on top, they started feeding subsurface. I caught extra fish on the same bait. And I think this is going to be 
one of the reasons why I keep this bait on a whole lot because I can I can switch depths and 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 do a lot more experimenting with one single bait. When it's on the top, it's a very good small Mikey. When it dives underwater, it almost replicates what a a diving crankbait will do. It is a two-jointed bait. It has a little different wobble. Uh, it has it, it's something that the fish don't see down that deep. I think this will replace some of the times when I'm fishing a, either a crankbait or even a jerk bait. A you know I love fishing the mega bass uh, jerk baits, and uh, it, it's it, it'll almost do the same thing, but it's bigger. It has a different um, wobble to it, and that's another thing I want to talk about. The action on this bait it is just perfect when it comes to uh, not only the side to side wobble but also as it's diving down the uh, the noise that it makes the you can hear it does have a click to it it's very subtle and this is a subtle bait I'll, I will warn you you uh, you don't want to overpower this bait with big you know um, twitches and things it, just very subtle twitches when you go to pull it underwater two or three uh, turns of the reel handle it'll get it down there and as this bait floats up it just has that perfect little dying bait fish imitation so unbelievable um, unbelievable action on this bait uh, once I got everything dialed in I found that I was catching a lot of fish within two or three seconds of the bait landing and me just twitching it a couple of times that was probably my number one uh, uh, technique when it comes to just getting bit. The bigger fish were coming by throwing it out and just leaving it sit, pulling it underwater with about three cranks of the handle and then letting it float up and do that all the way back to the boat and the fish seemed to hit it at any part of the retrieve. When I was throwing out and twitching it a little bit, they were hitting it right as soon as it hit the water. I also found that when I, when I um, put this in the diving mode and it dives down to four, five, six feet, whatever I could get it at. As it's coming up, I let it come up about a foot at a time and I'll just give it a slight twitch, let it come up, twitch it, let it come up. And I found that on the second or third twitch, when this bait gets, I'll say within a foot of the surface, that's when the fish were coming up and grabbing it. And it is an exciting bite because you never know how big the fish are. It's not like a topwater where they come up and slam it on top. The bigger fish were coming up and you just see the big swirl underneath and the second after you see that swirl you'd feel it on the rod you give them that one second and then like I said with these um, fairly forgiving rod I mean you put the steam on them and you get that rod bowed up and the fights on so these things have just been a killer I highly recommend that you guys get this bait it's gonna catch fish wherever you are if you're in the Delta and you like fishing wake baits this is going to be a great bait it's going to excel when you um, when you're fishing little areas like this and you have to maybe make a precision cast and again you can pitch this underhand with a crankbait rod and when you throw it into little areas where you have a very confined um, uh, strike zone it's great at twitching and staying in position. It doesn't move forward a lot. So you can keep it in that strike zone for a long time and it can be very subtle. So it really excels in that position or in that situation. It also excels uh, when it goes underwater. It is, it has very good deflection properties. It doesn't catch what we have out here is Eladia, but in your neck of the woods, you may have Hydrilla. As long as the vegetation is clean, it comes through pretty darn good. And just like a jerk bait or a lipless crank bait or, or a square bill, when you hit that vegetation and you feel it, if you can stop, this will stop and it'll float up just like one of the previously mentioned baits. And it'll give you kind of that, that second chance at a fish, you know, uh, coming up and hitting it. So man, I am impressed with this. I'm even going to be using this when I have two or three uh, jerk baits on in the fall. I'm going to make sure that I have this bait on because it it can almost repl replicate what a jerk bait does. Once it gets down underwater, I'm going to start fishing it a little faster and I know this is going to draw strikes. So with that, uh, like I said, stick around. I'll uh, put a couple minutes of uh, action footage up there 
and let you guys uh, have a look and, and you're going to see some of the problems that I had. You're going to see some of the uh, some of the wins that I had on this bait. So if you guys have not um, uh, subscribed and you like the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button and uh, let's get on with uh, some of the action. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Got a little soup with this one, but uh, they're not all big, but you're gonna get a lot of fish. Just nice, fun, quality fish on this Sioux Witch. What a great bait. Look at that chunk. <laughs> 